Okay, good morning class. So today we're looking at the analytical geometry. We're looking at the ex ex examples for exercise 4.3. So we're looking at inclination of a straight line. Have we done this last year? Huh? Have we done inclination last year? No. So this is on page 98. 93. 93. Okay, so inclination of a straight line. So um, <coughs> we are told, note that you're heading, of course, no? We define the inclination of a straight line as the positive theta angle that the straight line makes with a positive um, direction on the x-axis where theta is greater than or equal to 0 but this than equal to 180. So in other words, we believe that is your straight line in the first case, yeah? Then your in inclined angle, your, th your, your angle of inclination is that angle. Otherwise, if, the if it's an obtuse angle or the, it's a decreasing um, straight line function, on the positive x axis onto the line, that is your, your theta or your angle of inclination. Okay. So you have told in both of these diagrams, theta is the inclination angle. Okay, so I don't see that there. Um, is the inclination angle given the straight line, considering, uh, consider the straight line AB in the diagram below. Theta is the inclination of AB. B, A, C. Okay, so that's exactly what that is said now. How do we get to this fact is that if we're looking at, at this line here, okay, if I conclude this triangle here, this is my rise here, no? and this is my run. In grade 8, we, we, in grade 9, when we did graphs, we spoke about your rise and run method. No? There's three ways of drawing graphs. Okay, a table, the rise and run method, and the dual intercept method. The method you're currently using is the dual intercept. When you calculate the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Not so. Why oh, you look so shocked, Michael? Lisa? You're pulling your face like... <laughs> I don't know, what is going on with you? Are you okay? Which method do you use? Sorry? <laughs> we never draw straight line graphs. Okay, when you draw a straight line graph, how do you draw? We calculate the x intercept and the y intercept. And that's called the dual intercept method. Dual means two. The other one is the rise and run method. You go with a gradient and one point on the graph. Normally your y intercept. And thirdly, you draw a table. There's one of those three. But the easiest of the three is the dual intercept method. But if you look at this here, we know this is the rise and the run. Also, change in y over change in x. Or we can say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x. Where else do we use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1? Great. So in other words, if I use this here, it's my gradient. Is delta y over delta x. And I say, okay, this is a right angle triangle. So what is this? This is my triangle, my opposite. And this is my adjacent. So which trigonometric function uses opposite and adjacent? Yeah. So in other words, therefore, tan of theta to work out this angle is actually equal to the gradient, and that's how they get this. Okay, so you can write that down. The tan of theta is your the gradient. Okay, to work out this angle theta. Alright. In both is the OED, we read that already. So, uh, we can determine tan of theta using trigonometric definition of theta is equal to intra-angle ABC. Tan of theta is opposite of adjacent, which is BC over AC. Similarly, we can determine the gradient of AB by saying change in Y over change in X, which is BC over AC. We therefore tan of theta is equal to the gradient. Thus, the positive angle theta, which makes the straight line with the positive direction of the X-axis, is such that 
theta is equal to m. Here is supposed to be tan theta is equal to m. Let's check your textbooks. You should have a new textbook. No, it should read tan of theta is equal to m. Do they have tan theta there? Yes. Huh? Sorry? Yeah. Okay, so this is basically our older textbook. Where m is the gradient of that line segment there. People, there's a little note that is made here. I want you guys to write it down in your maths books, okay? When you get home, nice. So let's look at the application of this. All right. Just something to note at this point is that this will be a positive angle. Not so. Here we told the tan of is equal to Cm, the gradient D. Note that the gradient of CD is positive and thus tan of is positive. Here, theta is an acute angle. Acute angle means to say an angle less than 90 degrees. On this side here, you say tan of theta, this is your theta angle here, of course, tan of theta is equal to the gradient of PQ. Note that the gradient of PQ, this gradient will be negative. Why? Because it's a decreasing function. Here, theta is an obtuse angle, which means to say it's greater than 90, but less than 180. Okay. By definition, the inclination theta is such that theta is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to 90, uh, 180. Thus, we can conclude that if th theta is positive, then it's between zero and 90 degrees, which means to say it's in the first quadrant. And if uh, tan theta is negative, then theta has to be an obtuse angle. Ne? Note that we uh, exclude 90 since tan of theta is undefined for theta is equal to 90 degrees. Okay. A lot was said now, no? Right. We look at example one. Example one is on page. 91. <coughs> right, so determine the inclination theta of the straight line L if the gradient of L is as follows. Well, correct to two decimal places where this is. Okay, so the, the gradient in the first case is 4. That's my gradient. You all agree the gradient would be an increasing gradient. Why? So your gradient is positive. Not so. So what do we say? How do we work out this angle? We use the end of theta, which is the gradient. Okay, what's the gradient of this graph? 4. So the end of theta is equal to? So how do we get theta in zone? Half tan. Half tan of? Four. So let me calculate this. It's nice that your, your bag is going only open now. I like it. <laughs> well, let go, let you book. Okay, now we're waiting for you. What is half tan of four, my girl? Sorry? 75.96. Okay, you all agree with that? 75.96. Easy, no? Zosie, what do you think? Okay, she so says everything in maths is easy. Alright, let's look at B. People, this is a negative gradient. So the graph would be? Decreasing, not so. It could be decreasing there, or a bit lower than that, or it doesn't matter, but it has about that. Okay. Yes? Can't be Sorry? Can't be Go this way. Yeah. But this, a, this is increasing, which means to say the gradient is positive. Okay. But people, we don't, when, when we do these graphs, we don't have to draw it. Okay? If the gradient is given, well, I'm just giving you an idea of what is actually being calculated. Okay, how it basically looks. So that's your theta angle, don't forget. Okay? So people, what do we have here? We say 10 of theta equals gradient. Not so. But what's the gradient of this, of this line? Negative 2. So we say tan of theta is equal to negative 2. 
Are you getting the answer? Octane. So octane. Now normally when we degenerate solution, we drop the negative. Not so? But for this part of the work, we retain the negative. We keep the negative. The negative to this. So when you work shift 10 or arc 10, or 10 to the minus 1 of negative 2, gives me negative 63, comma, 4, 4, 3. Now where is that angle? That angle is actually this angle here. Negative 63, comma, uh, 4, 3. Sorry, how? Okay, so he says, how? Remember, if that is zero, this is? 90, this is? 92, 73. But if this is zero and I go in this direction, what is this? Negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, and so on. So if you're looking at that angle to be negative 63,4, then it's actually this angle. If that is 0 minus 90, so that is at negative 63,43. You all understand? Hmm? So, so, how do I get this angle in, in turn? How do I get that angle? We know that this angle of 63,43 plus theta adds up to? Adds up to? 180. Why does it add up to 180? Angles on a straight line adds up to 180. So if you've got a negative angle, you have negative 63,43. What do I do? I add 180 degrees. Remember that that angle is obtuse. No? It's an angle greater than 90, but listen, 180. Whenever we get a negative angle, we say plus 180 to it. Gives me an angle of 116, 5, 7. So theta is equal to 1, 1, 6, comma, 5, 7. Can you see it's obtuse? It's greater than 90, but this then? Is there any confusion? You with us, Rosie? Huh? Don't lose us, no? Lisa Kanye, why are you looking at that like it? Like that, yes? How was it test yesterday, Lisa? Easy. No? Yes, I'm glad it was so easy. I tried my best to make it easy. Right, people, we're looking at example two. Example two is on page 92. Huh? 92. 90. Example 2 by 90. The other question is determine the inclination correct to two decimal places where necessary of the straight line passing through each of the following pairs of points. People. Means of people. How do you calculate the inclination angle? What do I need? We, we know we're going to use tan of theta equals the gradient of, in this case, yeah. Okay. So let's just give you an idea of what this actually looks like. So if this is negative 2 and negative 4, this is E which is uh, negative 2 and negative 4, and F which is 7 and 5. This is by approximation. Will this gradient be positive or negative? Positive. positive. Will that angle be acute or obtuse? Am I going to add 180 to this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to give me an idea. Do I have to draw this here? No. Okay. So how do I work out the gradient of EF? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X2. If that is X1, Y1, that will be X2, Y. So what would uh, Y2 be? 5 minus negative 4 becomes plus 4 over 7 minus positive um, minus 2 which is so this gradient will come to be 9 over 9 which is so what do I now say therefore 10 of theta equals 
So I think this is equal to octane of 1. So octane, 45 degrees. It's a special angle. Okay. You guys understand? And then it doesn't get easier than this, no? Let's look at B. Again, we must work out the angle of inclination. Let's give me give you an idea of what it looks like. X is 3, Y is negative 2. And Q, this is now your P. Your Q is negative 1 and 8. So as you can see, it's a line going through the... What do you know about this? Is this gradient positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Well, this R angle be acute or obtuse? Obtuse. Which means to say, we're going to get the negative angle, which is this one here, and then what do we do? You guys understand? Right, so let's go with it. So the gradient, so we know that tan of theta must be the gradient of PQ. What is PQ's gradient? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. You all agree with that? So if I made this Y2, then this would be 8 minus minus 2 becomes plus 2 over negative 1 minus 3. What is 8 plus 2? 10. What's minus 1 minus 3? Minus 4. What's 10 over minus 4? Negative 5 over 2. Okay, otherwise I can just leave it like it. It doesn't matter. How do I get theta on its own? Of 10. Of negative 10 over 4. You all agree with that? When your calculator is arc 10 of negative uh, 10 over 4, check what you get. Negative 68.2, correct? Negative 68.2. Plus k times. Plus 180, sorry, not k times. That's right, 80. Not so? You're going to get confused here with your not solution. The theta is simply. One, one, 1. 1.8. Is there any confusion? Sorry? You're not confused. Just want to let us know you're not confused. Nice. Right. Any confusion? Zoe, you don't have to confirm with Aisha what you're confused about. You can ask us. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> What's that tells me? Imara. I was close, no? Who <laughs> oh, your name is? <laughs> Sorry. Right, people. Example three. Example three is on page ninety-two. Correct. Here we are asked to calculate the inclination of straight line y is plus three x plus uh, equals four. Correct to two decimal places. Right. So how do you calculate the inclination angle? We say tan of theta equals the gradient. Do we know the gradient of this line as it stands? No. To draw the gradient, it must be in standard form. What is the standard form of a straight line? Y is equal to mx plus. So to get this equation in, in the form of y is equal to mx plus 3, what do we need to do? Negative 3 over the equal sign. So therefore, y is equal to negative 3x plus. Not so. So what do we say now? Tan of theta equals negative 4. So theta is equal to half tan negative 3. The previous sum was negative 4. No? 1 over 30. But okay, it doesn't matter. Negative 3. Half tan of negative 3 is 
you have 10, oh, negative 3 gives you negative 71 comma 5, 7. Negative 71 comma 5, 7. But what do we do now? Add 180. Why? So that's an obtuse angle. So add 180 to it. So 108 comma 4, 7. Alright, people, is there any confusion there? Alright, for our work, I would like you guys to do exercise 4.3. Report to the office. Exercise 4.3 for tomorrow. The full list can be found in the description box. Jordan, is every day. Good morning, class.